فقلنا اضربوه ببعضها كذلك يحيي الله الموتى ويريكم آياته لعلكم تعقلون ثم قست قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة أو أشد قسوة وإن من الحجارة لما يتفجر منه الأنهار وإن منها لما يشقق فيخرج منه الماء وإن منها لما يهبط من خشية الله وما الله بغافل عما تعملون. First he says he shows you your, the ayat so you can understand. Of, of course, understanding is something that's up here, it's an intellectual thing. Then immediately he says, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ Then your hearts became hard. This afternoon I mentioned to those of you who were present, there are two faculties, there's our heart and there's our mind. First Allah questioned, why don't you think? Which is a faculty of the intellect. And immediately he said, there's a reason why you can't think straight. Because you, it's not that you have an intellectual problem, the real difficulty with you guys is you have a spiritual problem. Your hearts became hard. So the intellect is mentioned and the heart is mentioned. There's an integral relationship between these two entities, the, the, the mind and the heart. And the Arabic language, the Arabic of the Qur'an helps us understand some intricacies of that relationship. The word aqal in Arabic literally means to tie. Aqala, to tie something. Like aqalat al maratu sha'araha means a woman tied her hair. The woman tied her hair. Aqal is the rope that the Arabs put on top of their heads that they use to, you know, the, you know, seen Arabs that wear like the long scarves and they put the, the cute little rubber thing on top? Well, originally it wasn't a cute little rubber thing, it was a rope. And the rope was there because, not just because the scarf flies off, but because they would take it off and that was their anti-lock brakes for their camel. Okay, they just tie their camel with that rope. It was a means of restraint. Aqal is literally called a means, it's, the intellect is referred to as a means of restraint, a leash. Why? Because your emotions want you to do something, your temptations, your, your uh, you know, sentiments want you to say something, but you hold yourself back when you use your intellect. What we learned from that also is, you know, when you're overly angry, you can't think clearly. When your emotions are high, you can't think clearly. When you're overly sad, overly angry, overly scared, whenever any of those emotions are running high, your mind shuts off. You're, you're not thinking straight. Aql is a means of restraint. In other words, the, to the Arabs, until you have your emotions under control, Emotions to the Arabs are where, by the way, in the, mar, in, the hind, in, the, in the in the mind or in the heart, in the heart. Until your heart is in check, you can't use your mind properly. Our minds they process things. We calculate with our mind. We analyze with our mind. We understand things with our mind. We memorize. We learn things like that. We do this with our minds, and our minds progressively develop. In other words, the the mind of a child that's four is less advanced, and when it when he becomes six or seven or eight or ten, it starts getting more and more advanced. And when that same person becomes twenty, their mind has matured. And when they become thirty and forty, it's matured even more. So the mind is something that's constantly growing and maturing, and a learning more and more, acquiring more. And more. However, the heart is a different kind of entity. The heart doesn't mature or grow, the heart fluctuates. Well, some days you'll have really good days as far as remembering Allah and being cautious of Allah, and other days will be really bad. You have up and down in the heart. And the heart can become hard and the heart can become soft. It can die, it can come back to life, etc. Right? So on the one hand, you have this entity that matures, and on the other hand, you have this entity that inside of us that is very volatile. It's very, you know, a fragile entity, which is our hearts. We have to take care of this heart. So in, in other words, you know how sometimes the, the khatib will give a khutbah about something you've heard a thousand times, and the first thing that goes on in your head is, man, I already know this. I don't need to hear this again. I already know this. Well, you know it up here. Your mind understands it, but what still needs it? The, the, the heart still needs it. The heart needs the reminder. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ فَذَكْرِ النَّفَعَةِ الذِّكْرَى Reminder has benefit, benefit for the hearts. Now, the thing is though, the question is, as far as the, the Qur'an's picture of human psychology, when you and I make a decision, does that decision come from the mind or does it come from the heart? It's a very interesting philosophical question. 
Well, how do we make our decisions? And the, the, the answer to that is it's actually a combination of both, but the heart is in the driver's seat. The heart is actually in the driver's seat as far as the Qur'an's picture of this thing is concerned. Okay? Now, Allah Azza wa mentions their hearts became hard. The, the religious example I wanted to give you. Allah has acknowledged in Surah Al-Baqarah and other places that the Israelites at the time of the Messenger وسلم, were incredibly intelligent people. They're very, very smart people. They understand, they recognize. Later on in the latter half of this surah, we're gonna learn when they see the messenger, they know him as well as them recognizing their own children. Even when they change the book, there's one thing to change the book, you didn't realize it's God's book, so I changed it, I'm sorry. I didn't think I could, I thought I could edit it because it's human speech. Allah says, no, يُحَرِّفُونَهُ مِن بَعْدِ مَا عَقَلُوهُ They changed it even after they understood it. In other words, Allah is giving them credit that they actually understood. But what's the problem? There's no problem here. Actually, we even have hadith narrations where two rab- you know, the, the rabbi sent his son to meet the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Go find out if he's the one being promised in our books. So he spends time with the messenger and comes back and he says, so what did you find? He says, there's no doubt about it, that's the guy. That's the final messenger. And they both swear, we swear till our death we will oppose him. <laughs> right? Because their heart is not willing to accept a Gentile. A child of Ismail is not willing to accept it. So Allah says, now at the end of all of this, you understood that He's Allah's Messenger. You understood Allah gives life back you know, after death. You understood that it can only be Allah who parts the water so you can cross. You understood that the water coming out of the boulder can only be from Allah. But that was all up here. It never entered where? In here. It never entered the heart. And so even after seeing all of that, these things were supposed to melt your heart. But even these things could not... I mean a dead guy coming back to life? If you have kind of weak iman in Allah and you see a dead guy coming back to life by Allah's command in front of your eyes, you would say, you know what, astaghfirullah al-azim, I will take the rest of these last, last three, four days of Ramadan more seriously. <laughs> right? You, your iman would get straight. But these guys, Allah says, even after that, مِن بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ even after that, your hearts became hard. Because you, it's not that you have an intellectual problem, the real difficulty with you guys is you have a... Spiritual problem, your hearts became hard. The previous ayah said, why can't you understand? Why can't you use your mind? The, or don't you understand? The next ayah says, here's why you don't understand. Because your hearts are all gone. Your hearts have become, then your hearts became hard. Hearts became hard because they saw a dead guy come back to life. If anything is supposed to melt your heart, that should be it. Even that didn't work. If that didn't bring you the guidance, then there's nothing else that can be done for you. Your hearts became hard. Even after that. hijarati. Then they became like stones. Or they became even tougher, worse in terms of their stiffness. Even out of stones, there are those that rip open, that, cr- that burst open, and rivers come from them. Rivers burst out of them. You know... The, the, the stones that are going to be talked about in this ayah isn't actually a conversation about stones. It's about people. Three kinds of stones will be mentioned. And it's actually a parable of three kinds of hearts. Three kinds of hearts are compared with three kinds of stones. You know, for a, for a person who is um, intellectual, they're a thinker. When the Qur'an is presented to them, they think about it immediately. And when they think about it, they come to their conclusions very quickly. If they have decency in them, the, the, the process is very quick. When a person is distracted in life, even if they're a good person, but they're distracted in life, they're in the middle of a lot of stuff. You can't get their attention just by talking to them. Something has to happen that shakes them up, that gets their attention. Otherwise, you can't get their attention. Now what happens is, in this ayah, Allah talks about a rock that just bursts open. And rivers come out of it. It's like the heart of Abu Bakr. The potential iman, water in this ayah is faith. Water is iman itself, faith itself. When the message is presented to him, the water was so much already inside, you basically barely had to tap it and what happened? This iman just came out. There's no time taken for him to accept Islam. With Omar, the next kind of heart, Omar is not the interpretation, it's a sample of the next kind of heart. There's other people that can have that kind of heart. Distracted by stuff. The only way you can really get their attention is to rattle them. 
How does Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab come to Islam? You know the story, right? It's a traumatic experience. He hit his sister. He sees blood drip down her lip, and then he's like shaken by that. And at that moment, he has the attention of the Qur'an. At that moment. Had the Qur'an been written or given to him at a time where he wasn't paying attention like that, it wouldn't have had an effect. You know? And there's other stories in the case of Umar. He was shaken before too. Literally shaken. He was hiding behind the ghilaf of the Kaaba, the cover of the Kaaba, at night time. He was going to jump the Prophet and beat him up. The Prophet was praying. He started listening to the recitation and he said, this is some amazing poetry. That's beautiful. And the Prophet was reciting, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ It's not the word of a poet. How little you believe. He says, well, how, do you, how do you know what I was thinking? He must be a mind reader. وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنٍ قَلِيلًا لَا تَذَكَّرُونَ It's not the word of a mind reader. How does he know that? What is it? تَنْزِيلٌ مِّنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ a revelation from the master of all nations. He ran away. He got shaken up. He didn't become Muslim, he ran away. He got scared. You know? He was just shaken by it. There are some people who will come to Islam from an intellectual journey. Some will come to Islam after a car accident, after surgery, after losing a child, after something traumatic. They're going to come to Islam after almost dying in a, by disease. They're going to come to Islam because they lost a friend. Something happened. Something that shook them up happened. You know? And these are, these are two different kinds of hearts. So the second kind of heart Allah says, وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُوا فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ Out of the hearts there are ones that crack open and water comes out. It doesn't open on its own. It has to be hit and then it cracks open. Something has to shake it. And guess what? You'll still find water in there. This is very important for us to understand. You know why? Sometimes we meet people, you want to give them da'wah or you want to give them advice. Even in your own family, there's a cousin who doesn't want to hear it from you. You know, there's your brother, your sister, your, your uncle, whoever. And they just don't want to hear it from you. And you feel like their heart is really hard. But you don't know, there may be water inside. It just takes the right kind of event to crack it open. You know what I'm saying? So there are some people, you can't just talk to them and expect results. They take their time. How many years, you have to ask yourself, how many years before Hamza radiallahu anhu, how many years before Umar radiallahu anhu became Muslim? Do you know? Six years. Six years since the message began, you have to ask yourself, what are they doing for six years? You know? They're not enemies of Islam, which is interesting. Umar bin al-Khattab only became an advocate enemy of Islam right before he came to Islam. You know, when things reached a boiling point. So what's he doing the other five and a half years? He's hanging out. He's doing stuff. He's busy with life. When you look at it, you think there can't be any water in that one. Not in Omar. He's going to be a Muslim? Come on. Seriously? That guy? Do you know what he does? He's going to be a Muslim. And then when, it's, when that heart is shaken, Iman comes out of there too. But then there's a third kind of heart. Even out of them, there are those that fall from the fear of Allah. They fall from the fear of Allah. Allah mentions rocks that are falling like a landslide. You know how the picture of a landslide, ro rocks are falling? But He doesn't mention any water this time. The first two kinds of hearts, there were water. One more water than the other. But the third one, there was no water. What Allah is talking about is Islam without Iman. Islam without Iman. Iman is represented by what in this example? Water. When there's no water mentioned, but it still has the fear of Allah, it's submitting. It's falling from the fear of Allah, like a man falling in sajda, from the fear of Allah. Like the rock falls from the fear of Allah. But he may not have tasted iman yet. There is such a thing as having Islam without iman. Having become Muslim, coming to the faith without tasting the sweetness in your heart. Maybe your mind has submitted. Your, 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 your intellect has submitted to this mission, or this, 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 uh, this belief. But your heart hasn't tasted its sweetness yet. And when the heart tastes its sweetness, you'll shed tears. It'll tell. Your mind doesn't make you cry, your heart does. Right? So Allah says, قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ خُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا But when say they have faith, tell them, no, 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 you don't have faith, you've accepted Islam. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Iman hasn't entered your hearts yet. This water hasn't entered your rocks yet. That's what that is. Interestingly, the ayah began, your hearts were so hard, they were even worse than rock. Then Allah talked about three kinds of rock. Three kinds of rock represent three kinds of hearts. Three kinds of hearts that have hope, that have potential. 